Ladies and gentlemen, so you reaction this is Thermobatic Vacuum Bomb BLU 118/B by Channel Dark Tech. U.S. intelligence pointed to Osama bin Laden hiding the mountains of Afghanistan within the cave complexes several hundred feet below the ground. So why not use like, uh, you know, what was that bomb? I forgot the fucking name of the bomb. Uh, bunker Buster, right? Is, isn't that supposed to like? That's the whole point of it. Why not use that then? Thermobatic vacuum bomb. Yeah. Uh, vacuum bomb so far uh, as far as I can remember it's like there was a claim from Ukraine Russia used it or something it's supposed to be banned I didn't know US had it as well and they used it all the back whenever this was I guess 10 12 years ago or something yeah not 10 to more than 14 years ago or something right because that's how long it yeah Obama's not a thing since 14 hours 14 years or something so I'm obviously this is banned or something right but this is like fat recent say it, right? It's never illegal the first time. So I'm guessing this is the first time they used it. People realize well, how fucked up it is. And there's just like some convents and this and that and banned it, I'm guessing. Vacuum bomb. The name is just panicky. I'm a big physics guy. So I realize when names like this thrown out vacuum bomb, I can just imagine the effect of it, right? I still remember the news like how people's lungs were all like collapsed on something. That was the claim from Ukraine. But yeah. So let's always one. Remember, we'll flag my reaction. No phone, I subscribe. So, I know we start with react to more. Uh, check out the reaction. Sunday. There's a link in the season. And yeah, that's all it. U.S. intelligence pointed to Osama bin Laden hiding in the mountains of Afghanistan within the cave complexes several hundred feet below the ground. Then, in March of 2002, the Department of Defense and the United States Air Force unleashed their newest weapon on top of the Al-Qaeda and Taliban forces. Developed under unprecedented circumstances, but scientist Monette Andouan at the helm. Yeah, that was F-15, right? That insane number of, like, look at that, all these weapons shit. This is probably F-15. Is, uh, is it F-15 EX, the newer one that's supposed to be heavy loader like this? <laughs> look at the number of it, like, oh, there you go, we are all fucked. Helm, the blue 118B thermobaric bomb was built in a rush, ignoring most safety procedures and previous testing due to the urgency. Once it was finally ready, it proved so lethal that many experts believe it should never have been created at all. But as tensions rose in the Middle East, the U.S. forces nervously hoped that the thermobaric weapon would penetrate deep into the ground and destroy the cave complex once and for all. March 2002. Developed in the 1980s, the McDonnell Douglas F-15E Strike Eagle was designed to meet the United States Air Force requirements for an all-weather multi-role strike fighter capable of air-to-ground missions that could carry up to 23,000 pounds of air-to-ground and air-to-air -air weapons. Going back to its introduction in 1988, the multi-role strike fighter has been at the center of every major conflict the U.S. has been involved with, from Desert Shield to Operation Inherent Resolve and many others. Then, on March 2nd, 2002, in an undisclosed location near or around Afghanistan, a single F-15E Strike Eagle belonging to the 335th Fighter Squadron Chiefs from the 4th Fighter Wings took off from the Shanikot Mountains, near the country's eastern border. Hanging from its racks, the Strike Eagle carried the first operational Blue 118B thermobaric bomb, the United States' newest anti-terrorist weapon. The aircraft was taking part in Operation Anaconda, a joint military operation between the CIA paramilitary officers and several allies attempting to destroy all of this so anti-terrorist weapon so do, do conventions all the like you can't use this in a war type of like war crime conventions do they ignore when it comes to terrorism like you can use that against terrorism why not is that the case because I'm pretty sure all conventions apply to all humans regardless of what right I'm pretty sure I remember that so I'm guessing around this time there was no legally legal about this bomb right i don't know i'm surprised federation haven't covered this yet about thermobaric vacuum bomb especially when it was such a big thing a year or two ago where they use vacuum or vacuum of oh my god right it's like one of those things you you hear, hear about all the bombs when something new comes around you're like oh my god did i show you some super thing that nobody knows about not really but yeah there you go it's like you're you're short of all bombs that you need to create more like this there you go let's use physics to do our job Al-Qaeda and Taliban forces. 
Mission soldiers had found a tactically significant cave complex that, according to then Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Richard Myers, was crowded with essential enemy personnel. Tagged with a targeting laser, the F-15's computer carefully calculated the height, speed, and range, and released the weapon directly towards the tunnel complex's entrance, set near a house-like structure. As the bomb's fins and airfoils twisted and tweaked, the free-falling weapon set course to the ground, right to the end of the aircraft's laser beam. However, the bomb missed the target, and even though the details are classified, the Pentagon did announce that the bomb missed the cave because it detonated early, wasting all of its earth-shuddering energy above ground. Still, to the bomb's maker, the actual explosion was all that mattered. Thermobaric Weapon in July of 2001, Lieutenant Colonel Tom Ward arrived at the Department of Defense's offices, ready to comply with their request to develop a tunnel defeat weapon to potentially be used in North Korean subterranean nuclear stockpiles. The weapon needed to be capable of punching inside caves and flushing them out. Although Ward had never built a bomb, as a veteran project manager, he met with scientists and contractors, ran the numbers, and prepared a proposal to make 20 warheads that would test a thermobaric explosive. According to the mapped out schedule, the project would cost around $67 million and take about three years. Less than two months later, everything changed with the 9-11 terrorist attack, including the objectives of the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, as it was now thrust into a leading role in the new and uncertain war on terrorism. War Damn, of course, three years is not that long time when you really think about it. Like, okay, that's short time to develop. Yeah. Vacuum, I'm guessing like it's supposed to like suck out everything, like air and everything out of these caves, right? Vacuum bomb. Also it was supposed to like collapse your lungs if humans are there and everything, right? I don't know. I don't know what exact thing this is supposed to do. I hope, you know, he explains this here. Or I don't know how to watch some other technical video on it, like how it works. But yeah. Ford's thermobaric weapon was urgently needed, and he looked for available parts to create the new bomb, choosing the Blue 109 casing penetrator. Developed by Lockheed Martin, this inch-thick casing could demolish through six feet of concrete before detonation, which was perfect for targeting a cave complex. On October 11th, only four days after the official declaration of war in Afghanistan, Ward promised the Pentagon a bomb in 60 days. But although he had a plan to assemble the steel and the electronics, he still needed a lethal payload. At the time, there was no explosive in the world capable of doing what the new bomb was intended for, and Ward had no time to experiment with different chemical compounds as he wanted. What he needed was help from the best explosive scientist in America. Wynette Anduang. When Wynette Anduang arrived in Maryland in 1975 as a refugee from the Vietnam War, she promised that she would repay the United States for welcoming her and her family with open arms. As such, Duong decided that working with the Defense Department was the perfect way to fight for freedom and help preserve the country's... Vietnam War, it, same war the U.S. was doing? <sighs> Okay, I don't know, is this some different Vietnam War? But isn't that the same one the U.S. was doing? So she ran from there to U.S. like, I'm going to repay you for the war that you caused. Is, is that what I, I don't know. But yeah, regardless of that. Uh, seriously, man, this is so insane. Like, I'm pretty sure this is like the only account of they ever using it. And since the tension was so high around this time, I don't know, like, most things would go under radar because anything like this happening today recorded, it would be like on the news 24-7, right? This is like a newer type of thing. But still, like, wasn't Bunker Buster Bomb still a thing? I'm pretty sure it was. Like, it was used long ago. So they couldn't have used that or something? Multiple of them? That's the whole job of it, isn't it? So uh, penetrate below the ground? Integrity. When the war in Afghanistan started, Duong was the program manager for explosives at the Naval Surface Warfare Center Indian Head Division. An internationally recognized scientist, the 42-year-old Duong developed nearly a dozen high-performance compounds used by the Navy, Air Force, Army, and Marine Corps. After meeting with Ward, Duong accepted the challenge to cup with the potent payload the Department of Defense had requested, and the bomb maker had just what Ward was looking for, the PBXIH-135. A formula for an experimental explosive, the compound had already shown great promise in several tests. 
However, it had yet to be developed into a full-scale weapon. PBXIH-135 PBXIH-135 was made up of a standard military explosive called HMX, blended with a polyurethane rubber. The secret to the mixture was the addition of a precise blend of aluminum powder, which burned in the hot gases. While a typical explosion might last a few microseconds and course a few hundred feet down a tunnel, a thermobaric blast fueled with aluminum and detonated in a confined space can release seven times more energy. Within only 60 days, Duong and her team at Indian Head had no choice but to disregard standard safety checks, forego any further testing, and create over 600 gallons of PBXIH-135 to cast it into bombs. After the PBXIH-135 was approved by the Navy and deemed safe enough to make a real bomb, the team ordered 20,000 pounds of HMX, pausing every other project they were working on. By mid-November, the scientists were mixing the ingredients and carefully measuring and pouring the compound into empty bombs. Although the first two bombs failed during the mixing process, the Indian head team continued working under enormous pressure. Soon, a batch of blue 118B bombs was ready and sent to a Nevada test site. Success and Outrage By December 14th, the day of the first official test, the urgent need for the bomb had turned into desperation, as intelligence sources suggested that Al-Qaeda founder Osama bin Laden was stationed in an underground compound in the Tora Bora region. As the bomb fell from 9,000 feet, Duong watched from a control room filled with television screens, analyzing the cave target both inside and out. While the final results took days to calculate, the conclusion was remarkable and unambiguous. The thermobaric weapon was a success. A week later, when the Pentagon released a videotape of the December 14th test and aired it on national networks, the world found out what the Indian head scientists had been up to for the past two and a half months. While the team of scientists was hailed by the nation as high-tech warriors, the international community was outraged, calling it a weapon of mass destruction, especially as some confused its name with napalm due to a similar designation used in the Vietnam War. Okay. Yeah, people are pissed off. Yeah, you, somebody just bombed out buildings and killed thousands of people. Two towers went down. What you yeah, come on. Okay, yeah, we're using something that's unconventional. Whatever. It's retaliation. What do you want? <laughs> oh, this is a weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, 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 it is. It definitely, that's what that is. <laughs> that's have been the answer. Yeah, it's definitely that what it is. Right? What do you think? You're going to attack us and we're just going to sit down? Come on. Criticism caught the Pentagon and Duong off guard, and Lieutenant Ward and the Defense Threat Reduction Agency were forced to issue a press release, assuring the world that Blue 118B was not nearly as lethal as its most ardent critics claimed, and confirmed that it did not violate any international treaties. A castillo. <laughs> it's not as lethal as you think, come on. We're just trying to kill few people, not the, the whole politics of things is like always fascinating, right? When you like, let's just say all out war, trying to kill each other, obviously, you have to explain like you're not trying to kill somebody too much. Like really? I understand the nu because of nuclear thing, we have this to but that's at the nuclear level. This is not nuclear. Nothing besides nuclear can go at the nuclear level. Unless we make something like, let's just say black hole bombs or something, but that's far, far ahead. But yeah, so people, people have to explain this like, oh, this is not that lethal. I mean, okay, you want me to, you know, sir, Launch 10 less lethal one or one lethal one. That damage is the same. I still don't understand the whole element. I see that all the time. Oh, it's not as lethal and we have to explain it like this is humane. You're trying to kill each other right now. Attack happened at US soil. They're trying to retaliate. Come on. A missed opportunity. After the bomb was dropped on March 2nd, 2002 and missed its target, 4th Fighter Wing pilot Captain Randall Haskin 2000 is barely months from the actual thing. It's months from 9/11, and they have to explain. Oh, we are not. We are not trying to. This was a time everybody was. Everybody was pissed. I'm pretty sure I remember. Like in US, people were being put in camps. Anybody who looks, even Indian people, were put in the camps. They're like, wait a minute, I'm Indian. What the fuck? It's not even the same thing. Like I don't care. That that was the emotion going on around that time. They have to explain it. Oh, this is this is not as fucked up as you think. Oh, it is. We're trying to attack right now. 
recalled the reasons for the bomb's failed delivery in an interview with the Aviation Geek Club. According to the pilot, there was always a 50% chance that delivery would not work. During the mission, as Haskins said, quote, the pilot performed a last-second bunt to delay bomb release so that the weapons systems officer could get a better view of the designated mean point of impact. That's a normal thing for us to do with a standard laser-guided bomb. However, with the GBU-24 Paveway 3, the family of laser-guided weapons the bomb belonged to, the bunt put the bomb into a different flight mode than the one that was initially planned by the Air Force. As such, the bomb failed to follow the planned flight profile and thus smacked the ridgeline instead of the cave complex's entrance, missing its target. Still, Duong was proud of the achievement. According to the now legendary scientists, quote, the blue 118B, to me, is another example of what is wonderful about this country. At a time that was supposed to be a moment of weakness, the American people worked together, people of all religions and colors and backgrounds. I think it's a prime example of United Nations. Weakness. <laughs> I get it, the emotions were high, but yeah. Somebody attacked United States soil. U.S. being the most powerful country on the planet, military, economy, everywhere. Which universe is weak? They're going to be pissed off, obviously, like they were. But yeah, the, the whole whole point of her is like, in this kind of like a democratic open country, a Vietnamese went to United States and they're like, okay, you're a top scientist, now make it. That doesn't happen in most countries, let's just say. Most countries would either underutilize her or just like put her aside, right? So it's like uh, some some other country's person and a female. Very few countries around the world would give her a chance like this. That's what she should have said and, you know, make something like this. This is why United States work, right? Regardless of how many like uh, pissed off right-wingers become, the point is whole United States are always work. It's like they take the best people, whether from them or outside of the world right outside of their country so it doesn't matter the religion doesn't matter the skin color doesn't matter male female if it works they'll use it right that's the one thing i also realized from factorization videos best thing about usa is like regardless how ridiculous some idea might be if it works they're like ah oh, fuck it let's do it should we put bombs on cats and whatever yeah should we put bombs on the pigeon and throw it let's do that as well why why the hell not maybe it'll work stand united we fall united we win it makes me very proud. Thank you for watching our dark tech video. If you liked it, please. I like it. He sounds like those dark fight style channels, right? It's just like intense music playing. It's like top five, top ten type of way. Yeah. It makes a mood. This was a good video, man. Like, it's a good channel, dark tech. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I didn't even see the views. I thought it was 900,000. This is 9 million views in a year or so. Year and a half. That's something, yeah. Not many people make videos like this, thermobaric bombs. They should, right? This like today's insane tech that nobody knows about type of way, right? Because I'm pretty sure like until somebody did, the, you know, that reports came, the Russia used it against Ukraine. Nobody even thinking of this such thing as vacuum bomb. But there you go. Is that true? Did Russia used it? Or is like nobody can confirm uh, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, right, well, that was some more Barrick Vacuum Bomb BLU118 slash B by the channel Dark Tech. If you like my reaction, don't subscribe. If you haven't seen other reactions like this, I've been doing military style videos recently. If you haven't seen that, check out the link in the description. There you'll find it or the end card right now. Uh, if you want me to do any reactions specific to anything, comment down. I'll definitely get to it. And yeah, I'll see you next time.